once a sleepy port in the Amazon basin, Santa Rame is now a hive of international attention as the timber-guzzling 21st century looms on the horizon. Timber importers, like these from the Scottish Hardwood Charter, come in search of future supplies, for they, like many other members of the trade, have agreed only to use supplies from well-managed forests by the 31st of December 1995. The rainforest of the Brazilian Amazon once covered 285 million hectares. That's an awful lot of land. They still cover more than 250 million. And here they are on either side of this giant river doing their vitally important things. Now there are two reasons why so much of them have survived. First of all, inaccessibility. This may be the biggest river in the world, but there are very, very few roads. And the second is biodiversity. You see, in these forests, there are more than 2,000 species of trees to choose from, so there's never been any real need for clear felling. Indeed, the vast bulk of the 12% that have been destroyed are due to burning for agriculture. We hear a lot of bad news from the rainforests of South America, and so we should, for needless destruction is going on faster than the world can really afford. Well, here's a bit of good news of a giant experiment which is already turning the tide of forest destruction in this tiny corner of Amazonia. Ten years ago, all this was part of a cattle ranch, and the forest, which still grows all around, would have gone the same way slashed and burned into submission. Now it's a thriving village. Little boxes, little boxes, yes, but they're all made out of natural products. Homes to families with time to fix the shingles and the doors. All set about with a semi-organic farm, which produces most of the food, the workforce and the families need. Here too, tree nurses grow many, many seedlings, ready for a new life. Then. Out they go, plantation style, onto the old Hamburger Ranch. And this, believe it or not, is only ooh, just over three years of age, five metres tall already, and it's one of the most sought after timbers in the world mahogany. Chippendales and Sheratons of the future, here they come. And it won't be too long in the future either, because at this rate of growth, these will be ready for harvest in under 40 years. And what better place to learn about wise management of a renewable resource than here in a school set in the very heart of that same forest. <laughs> At school they have a fourth R in the curriculum. The R in their bountiful environment. Today's lesson is the fruits of the forest and of the farm. Pepper, beans, rice, maize, meu nome é Maria Elizabeth Cavalho da Silva. Eu tenho 10 anos. Ah, obrigado. All living things need water, and that includes us human beings. But round here, the real water users are the giant forest trees. Yes, all the time they're pumping water up and evaporating it from their leaves. And as it evaporates, it cools the air down and casts a great area of cool shade. It even seeds those fluffy white clouds up there, and eventually that wool water will fall as rain further downwind. Now that all happens as long as the forest's here. But remove the forest and the climate really does begin to change. And when the rains come, all the soil and any hope of a sustainable lifestyle is washed away. With the forest intact, the water can be put to work in many ways. 
This wheel pumps water up from a spring to serve the village. No need for treatment, for it is rain forest pure, naturally. While microhydropower allows work and family life to continue outside the 12 hours of daylight, which orders all the other life of the forest. So you see, they live in a village which as far as food, in fact as far as all the products of the forest are concerned, bears the hallmark of sustainability. But what about the forest? How's the forest managed? A herringbone system of roads is vital. Damage unfortunately must occur, but it's kept to a minimum as a skilled driver weaves around the trees. Detailed survey has already identified the trees that will be cut. None under 45 centimetres in girth and on average only six trees per hectare. Each marked tree is felled so that the great trunk and crown causes as little damage as possible to the rest of the forest. The whole forest shivers with the impact. The only consoling feature is that if nature took her course, each tree would in time fall to the ground, with no thought for the others round about. In comes the skidder, cushioned on great rubber-tired wheels, and drags the trunk away to a collection point. There's only one more environmentally friendly way to do it, and that's elephants. The whole operation lasts six months, if the rain holds off. The crop, an incredible 30 cubic metres per hectare of up to 10 different species. Perhaps even more incredible, if it's all done well, at least 90% of the forest canopy is undamaged and continues to grow. And all the big old trees past their prime are left in place. So... When Maria Elisabetta was five years old, the first forest block was cut, and then year by year, different blocks are harvested and allowed to naturally regenerate. And the exciting thing is that when Maria Elisabetta's block is cut again, well, she'll be a mum with children, or as she's doing so well at school there, she could even be the engineer in charge of the project. The permanent village workforce is the key to future success. The people are always here, tending the roads and looking after the trees. They are the true managers of this branch of the real world bank of biodiversity. Almost exactly four years ago, the skidder truck came through here, dragging the big logs behind it. And just look what's happened. All the seedlings and saplings roaring up towards the light. 100% natural regeneration. Now, over those four years, there has been some tidying up, but basically it's been left on its own. And looking around, we can still see the big trees growing along. Mass Alam Duga, the big one in the background, 40 years old. And, you know, if the forest growth is right, in another 25 years, the skidder truck could come through and tow that one away. And I believe it's about to rain. But after all, this is tropical rainforest. One, to coin a phrase, we made a little earlier. Sadly, of course, it's not perfect. The forest will never be the same again. And how fast will the second, let alone the tenth crop of timber grow? But it must be better than the old way. The area opened up to shifting agriculture. Down come all the rest of the trees to be burnt on the spot, and crops are then planted in the ashes of the forest. A small family makes a meagre living for a few years until the soil is exhausted. Then it's only fit for grazing, and the beef barons move in. 
And that's real bad news for the members of the Scottish Hardwood Charter, let alone the international timber trade. Palabenj Plavorse, and it's only going to be a happy birthday if this experiment is seen to work and put into action on a grand scale. Because you see, without the forest, the mother tree cannot set any Brazil nuts, and there is no sustainable future for these and many other children. It really is a very knotty problem. And not the first one in this neck of the rainforest. Everything's up to date in Belterra City, or at least it was back in the 1930s when Henry Ford built this whole, whole town as part of a large experiment in growing rubber for the motor car industry. Unfortunately, the experiment was a failure, but out in the old plantations, the work still goes on, thanks to the Brazilian Forest Research Institute, Embrapa. They've got 65 different sort of Brazilian trees here on test, and aren't they doing well? On my left, Brazil nuts, great to eat. And on my right, Brazilian Iroco, a really great timber. More than 3,000 different sorts of trees are found growing in the rainforests of the Amazon. But they can basically be divided into three different sorts. First, the light-coloured wood, and they grow the fastest. Then the reddy brown wood, which grows slower. And finally, the really dark, deeply coloured woods, which grow slowest of all. Now, 31 years ago, in this area, many different sorts of trees were planted out in plantation form. And this, believe it or not, is one of the slow-growing ones. Just about half my age. And this is a medium one, great for furniture. And it's got a label to prove it. And this is one of the really fast movers. Research, though hampered by lack of funding, goes on to improve the production of cut over forest by interplanting. But in the shade of the canopy and in competition with lianas, growth can be slow and management very costly. So, plantations on defunct farmland seem the most promising for the future, and with results which promise in excess of 120 cubic metres per hectare per year, that seems to be the way ahead. Now, at that rate of production, if half the area of the Brazilian rainforest, which had been already destroyed, was rehabilitated as plantation, it would produce around 2,000 million cubic metres per annum. Great news for the Scottish Hardwood Charter, because that 20,000 times more than they need. This operation in Santa Rain generates 400 direct jobs, 2,000 indirect jobs and guarantees the subsistence of more than 8,000 people. Using a forest management system which seeks to ensure the production of raw material in a sustained regime. Scale that all up to those new plantations and there's real hope for 2.8 million people. The exciting thing is that new laws have now been passed which should expedite that process. Brazil now knows the value of her timber resource and is beginning to handle it with the care it deserves all along the line of production, from the forest to the international market. If the world can be taught the same lesson, perhaps it can be made to work. In 1992, the year of the Rio summit, 
50 million cubic meters of hardwood were dragged out of the Brazilian Amazon. 48 million were used by the people of Brazil, value added in all. Only 2 million went to the international timber trade. A trade which is all set to explode. You see, this old river's getting busier and busier with delegations and companies from China, Korea, the Philippines and of course Japan queuing up for their future supplies of timber as all the accessible forests of the Pacific Rim are finally being stripped of all their assets. The only chance there is for the forests of the Amazon is for all those governments who went to Rio to stop talking and act to ensure that in future all timber supplies of any sort come from well-managed forests and plantations. This is the final chance, not only for the people of the Amazon, but for the children of the world. For their sakes, make it happen, please, now.